In this tutorial I will show you how to use Evolute tools for Rhino to approximate the shape of a boat hull with developable strips. Uh, the tutorial requires some general knowledge about how Evolute tools works, so I'm not going to explain everything about the workflow again. So let's say you want to build these catamaran hulls out of flat material and in order to do that you will have to approximate the shape of the hull with developable strips. So let's just start to do that. Uh, for this example I will use just half of the hull and you can simply mirror that after the work is done. First I'm going to chop off a bit of the bow because it's just way easier to uh, make this bow nice and fair by uh, building it out of foam for example and just glue it on the holes later. So let's just cut it off a bit. I can start to create the coarse mesh and I will use that for the subdivision process and the subdivided mesh will be forced to take the shape of this input surface and I need to make sure I shrink the control polygon of uh, this surface because it's it has been trimmed and I'm going to cheat on the creation of the coarse mesh which is normally a, a manual process but I will use the control polygon of this nerve surface so I'll just go to mesh nerves from control polygon and this is it I'm going to do a bit of manual editing on it for example I don't need all this detail here I want to make sure it's welded and let's just start to delete some polylines and I'm not too happy with these two rocker panels here and I want to modify that I'll do a few loop cuts on the freeboard and I'm going to delete this edge here okay now I'm pretty happy with the number of sides on this giant hull and I'm going to start the optimization process first I want to have some vertices set as corners these ones and the ones at the bow and this is so the optimization process and the subdivision process will not try to smoothen the mesh around those corners these are set and I'm going to set two vertices here at the transom fixed so they just don't move at all good I can set my reference surface and before optimizing we just have a look at the optimization parameters I'm going to use surface closeness curve closeness and I'm going to use original closeness too because I want all these vertices in the profile to move as little as possible. Okay, let's just ramp this up to 1.2 and pretty much everything else is set to zero. So let's just start to optimize. And as you, you can see that the coarse mesh is taking the shape of the input surface. An important thing to note is that when you're approximating this nice round hole with chines, you will lose some displacement. So because of that, I'll just scale this hole just a bit in one dimension. Let's go to 1.05. It's still set as a reference and I'm going to optimize again. Good. Now I can just hide this surface so we can see our coarse mesh better. And even if it's pretty coarse, you can see that it has a lot of fairness into it. And this is simply because this is actually the control polygon of our nerve surface and that was really smooth. I'm going to set some vertices at the bow fixed too. This one and this one. Let's see if they overlap with the bow edge. No, and we will 
because of that we will move them manually there I will move all these two and let's have a look at the top here I will drag it into position make sure it's uh, it's fixed it is selected and we can just carry on with the optimization process let's hide the reference again and let's have a look at the planarity because the planarity is really important when you want to approximate that nice round hole with developable strips it's one of the most important conditions for creating that developable strips so let's set the range this is not really bad we have 2.4 centimeters as the distance between the diagonals of these panels and they are pretty big but we will get them to be a bit flatter so let's ramp up some of the parameters uh, before we do that actually I will want to have a single freeboard panel here it's just it will make the building process easier you will have less panels so I'll just delete this edge um, let's just optimize again and yeah it's pretty much it's the same shape so I will ramp up the planarity now let's just go to 0.5 and see what happens not a lot let's try to combine this with a bit of fairness and it's getting a bit better let's set the range again and we're down to 2.1 centimeters from 2.4 I will want to get rid of the fairness right now because the shape is actually nice and fair so let's just go to zero and ramp up the planarity a bit more go to one and optimize again and you can see from the color coding that is getting much better and you can just optimize until there are no more changes to be done so this is actually quite nice let's set the range and we're down to 1.4 centimeters that is not bad at all um, we can probably deform plywood into this shape without any worries uh, but I will still want to ramp up planarity just a bit more just to make sure this is all okay so I'll optimize and it's getting better and better and better and better and better let's set the range again and I'm actually pretty happy right now we have 1.1 centimeters as the distance between the diagonals of these red panels this is the maximum distance and we have a lot of flat panels as you can actually see here good at this point we will subdivide this coarse mesh into strips so we can start the developable strips approximation first I will set the ruling direction and this basically tells the subdivision algorithm in which direction we will have the strips so I'll just select the mesh and subdivide by strips I'll do a few more steps just to get a nice density it is important to note that when you're subdividing with strips it will maintain the smoothness in this direction let's have a look at the planarity of this thing I'll just edit and set the range and we're down to less than one millimeter which is just great I mean you can you can bend plywood in this shape without any worries so we actually we have our developable strips right now but I'll have to remind you this is a mesh and in order to be able to develop these panels I'll have to loft all these small sections so I'll just go fast through that and I will show you the actual strips first I'm just going to extract all the polylines from this mesh and then I will use all those lines to loft these developable strips into NURBS so 
now I don't need the mesh anymore, I'll just hide it. So I recreated this catamaran hull with developable strips and we can start to unroll them in order to start the building process. So I'll just select a few panels just for test. Let's get the freeboard and unroll. And let's some other panels. So pretty much you get the idea. And now we can just simply cut these panels out of flat material and when we assemble them on the jig, on the bulkheads maybe, we will be sure that they just fit together and they recreate the shape of the original hull. I'm pretty sure you can think of some other applications but I think you get the idea. So thanks for watching.